Well, let's just identify what recovery is. I mean, just think of the word alone. What are you recovering? Um, control of your life. When we talk about one's life, we talk about those life areas. One's physical existence, psychological, interpersonal, meaning friends or family or social group, academic or vocational, school or work, one's financial existence, okay, because last I checked, drugs still cost money, okay? And of course, the last one is how I deal with life in general, meaning like uh, my cravings for this, this drug. So when we talk about recovery, it's recovering some semblance of order in my major life areas. Okay, now uh, learning coping skills, developing a healthy support network. Um, to recover, I mean, people don't enter into, they don't come through our doors here saying, oh, my life is perfect, I just figured I'd stop in and see how you're doing. Um, when we talk about bottoms, right, and that's a phrase used in self-help, rock bottom. Um, you know, bottom is done when you throw down the shovel and you say, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay? Or when all of my life areas have had clinically significant impairment, meaning I've been arrested a bunch of times, all my money's gone, my family's throwing me out, I can't maintain relationships, I can't attend school, my job has fired me. Those are the life areas that we look for. So when we talk about recovery, it's recovering some sort of semblance of those life areas and, of course, the ability to manage those life areas. Um, just because someone enters into recovery program doesn't mean that life automatically gets easier. Life remains life. Uh, and this is why we need skills to manage life. Right. Um, let's just talk about relapse. What's commonly referred to as relapse. Um, let me just give Lycad's opinion on this. Substance use is one of the few diseases where it is so progressive and it does have such an impact on those life areas. Um, if we were to take, let's say, depression, or let's say even cancer, right? Um, if you were to take any of these diseases, uh, God forbid um, someone I knew had cancer, you would say 30 miles away is the greatest cancer institute in the world. They would be assessed, they would be welcomed, they would be given six weeks of chemotherapy, six months of radiation, they would be given years of follow-up, uh, they would be given counseling, and if God forbid there was a relapse, or right, if there was the appearance of some kind of resurgence of cancer, they would immediately do treatment again. Uh, substance use, and that's the same with depression. With depression, you would be given an assessment, you would give you medication, you would be given counseling, and if sadness or infinite or uh, despair cropped up again, we would intensify the counseling, maybe um, increase the levels of medication. We would actually bring people closer in, right? Um, so the epidemiology of all diseases is to get progressively worse left untreated, and even when it's treated, sometimes there is a resurgence or a relapse to either old behaviors or old conditions. Substance use is one of the few disorders where we say, all right, we're gonna send you to treatment, but never show a symptom again. You know, we don't wanna see a relapse. Well, oftentimes relapse is part of the recovery process. As people are trying to formulate some kind of semblance of order of their lives, we are human beings and we're fallible. We don't do everything perfectly. And it's real easy to regress back to old behaviors. Why? Because even though they're not healthy, they appear comfortable. They appear comfortable. So when we talk about relapse, what is relapse? It's a relapse to old behavior patterns. And even before the behavior, it's a relapse to old cognitive thoughts. Um, uh, uh, Self-help groups will use the term stinking thinking. Oh, this isn't worth it. I'll never be able to get sober. I got sober and life is still hard. I got sober and my girlfriend or boyfriend or husband and wife is still difficult. I got sober and my family's still dysfunctional. Um, so oftentimes, uh, you know, people will relapse back to the, what they appear or what they perceive as the comforts of their synthetic coping skills. Drugs. All right? The key with relapse is, um, is to keep people engaged in the process. Relapse, believe it or not, can actually be a really, really important learning experience. Um, uh, and, you know, as the old saying goes, you fall off the horse, you get right back on. Right back on. Um, because of substance use disorders, because of the nihilism or the denial that comes with substance use disorders, um, we have young people all the time here saying, I was sober for 59 days and then I used. And then what'd you do? Then I stayed out for three years. You know, that's the mentality of someone who's still sick, saying, I'm a failure. I couldn't throw, a, and using the baseball metaphor, I hear um, no, no hitters are a rarity in baseball. I'm not a baseball fan. That means no one, rarely is a perfect game thrown. Rarely is a recovery process flawless, all right? Sometimes there is this resurgence of uh, biopsychosocial symptoms, 
and they need to be treated as such. So um, ideally, people come in here every week and say, I've relapsed to an old behavior. Okay, well, wh what did you learn or what do we do about it? Do you need another detoxification? I, you know, are you using to the point where you need to get medically stabilized again? What can, what can we do to get you um, re-engaged in a healthier lifestyle? Okay? And most importantly is what we do here, no judgment. We have, uh, sometimes we have counselors here like, he comes in every month, I've made him 17 appointments for detox programs. I said, make him 18. Make him the 19th appointment. Because for 59 years, Lycad's been here every week or every month minimum. There's someone who walks in and says, you don't remember me. But 18 years ago or seven years ago or seven months ago, you sent me to detox and I just experienced seven months sober, seven years sober. So we never know when people get it. But the key is to keep them engaged in the process. Um, people didn't get sick overnight. Remember, the drug use progression from experimental drug use to misuse to dependence takes a while. Now, shorter than we've seen in recent years, but it doesn't happen overnight. So people don't get sick overnight. Sometimes we need to understand that people don't get better overnight. Sometimes there are setbacks. Two steps back, three steps forward but to keep them engaged in the process. We work from a model called the stages of changing behavior. And you know, it's, 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 it's circular, meaning there's no real beginning, middle, or end. They enter into a recovery process and they may have setbacks, but we keep them engaged in the process. In the process of what? Of growth, of developing coping skills, of uh, communication, you know? Uh, and most importantly, with relapse prevention counseling, we help them analyze um, where they think um, their, their trigger was. What is a trigger? Triggers that trigger thoughts of obsessions and compulsions about their drugs. Um, we talk about people, places, and things. Um, you know, sometimes people can't take the same way home every night because they drive past their dealer's house. We recommend going another way. Some people can't drive past the neighborhood liquor store because they've been buying liquor there for five years. Drive a different way. Sometimes it's music that triggers these emotional or, uh, uh, reactions um, that trigger the, the craving or the urge to use drugs. So all this is part of relapse prevention counseling, getting them to understand that thoughts influence behaviors uh, and behaviors often lead to consequences. Uh, utilizing support networks. We have recovery counselors here. You can reach a LICAD clinician 24 hours a day. Uh, there are many apps now where literally from your smartphone you can get FaceTime with people, you know, and this has been very effective, I hear, with relapse prevention, with modern technology. Uh, we have e-therapy here. You can, you know, see a counselor even though you're on the street face-to-face -face through secure video. I mean, technology has really gone a long way, and of course, you know, self-help groups don't have the market cornered on this, but, you know, always call before you pick up. That's a, that's a key phrase. Sometimes we can't manage or people can't manage the urges on their own. Um, that's why it's in, so important to share a problem and cut it in half. Utilize support networks. And we have a relapse prevention group that meets here and in Ronkonkoma. And it fosters relationships. Oh, you're trying to do this recovery thing too? So am I. Let's hang out. And for young people, socialization is still really, really important. But fortunately, there's so many young people entering into recovery at ages we've never before seen they're so invigorated with a newfound life that there's many social activities. Um, you know, we're 40 miles from the epicenter of the perceived epicenter of the world. We're surrounded by water on all sides. You know, it's an important opportunity uh, when we talk about recovery to allow people to get back um, to some of the things that they may have abandoned. Their sports, their art, um, their uh, creativity, uh, their socialization, their dance, their music, you know. Uh, and of course, um, their ability to be able to communicate with others.